Like her adoptive father, she was raised in the wrong family, and just like him, after discovering her true origins, she wanted revenge. Today I will be talking about Amato Miwa, also known as Karai. Miwa is a Japanese name that means beautiful harmony, while Karai is a Japanese name that means spicy or severe. Ironically, she used the name Harmony before knowing her real name was Miwa. You probably know of the original version of Karai that was created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. That version was very different to this one. In fact, this time around, Siro Nia Lee, who adapted the character for the 2012 cartoon, was influenced by the 2003 animated series where Car I was the adopted daughter of the Shredder. This version of the character was voiced by Kelly Hu, and her facial makeup was based on a character played by Diane Lane in the movie, Ladies and Gentlemen the Fabulous Stains. As I already mentioned, Car I's story was an echo of the Shredder's origin. He was raised by the man who killed his father and raised as a brother to Amato Yoshi. But Shredder eventually found out his true origins and wanted revenge. Sadly, this led to him killing Tang Shen, Yoshi's wife, who he was in love with, leaving Yoshi for dead in a fire. He took his baby girl, Miwa, and raised her as his, under the name of Karai. When she was approximately 16, she found out about the turtles and started sparring with Leonardo for fun, despite knowing that he was a mortal enemy to her father. While tailing the turtles, she found out about the Krang and brought one of their exoskeletons to the Shredder to learn how to use the technology in their favor. But it didn't take long for Karai to realize that the Krang weren't good. After finding out an alien invasion was inevitable, she offered the turtles to steal a missile launcher from the Shredder so they could take down the Krang. Unfortunately, the turtles couldn't resist attacking the Shredder now that they knew where he was going to be. Kar-Eye felt betrayed by this and revealed she was the Shredder's daughter. This fight made her side with her father and she became an enemy to the brothers. During a confrontation between the Shredder and Splinter, and after seeing kar -Eye's similarities with Tang Shen, Splinter realized she was Miwa. The two fought for a bit, but Splinter eventually escaped. Karai was obsessed with revenge against Splinter, as she was told while growing up that Hamato Yoshi killed her mother. Leonardo tried to convince her that Splinter would have never done something like that, not knowing that she was actually Splinter's daughter. Splinter eventually revealed the truth to the Turtles, and they tried to let her know about it during a conflict where Tiger Claw kidnapped the Turtles to bait Splinter into a fight. Splinter was drugged and taken to the Shredder, but Karai stopped the execution as it wasn't honorable to kill him in that state. Shredder decided to let Splinter rest, but this gave him enough time for the turtles to come to the rescue. Still, Karai wasn't convinced about her newfound origins, and she teamed up with Tiger Claw to lead the clan to the turtle lair. But once she was there and talked to Splinter, she finally realized she was really Amato Yoshi's daughter. After seeing the complete version of the picture of her mother, now with Amato Yoshi, she revealed that Tiger Claw was coming their way and they managed to lead him into the wrong place. The confrontation ended with Karai kidnapped by Tiger Claw, because in this show, kidnapping is as common as eating pizza. Tiger Claw took Karai to the Shredder, who finally admitted to the truth of her origins and then decided to put her in a dungeon. The Turtles rescued Karai from the dungeon and brought her to their lair. Master Splinter explained the Shredder's backstory to her, but this only made her more furious and obsessed at getting revenge for the death of her mother and all the lies she grew up with. Splinter tried to dissuade her from doing that, but she was as obsessed as the Shredder and went back to the Foot headquarters to kill him. It didn't work, but instead, she was kidnapped again, to be used as bait for Splinter. Now hear me out, because you are about to listen to the Shredder's master plan. He prepared a vat of mutagen with serpent DNA and hanged Karai's cage on top of it, but he didn't really want to mutate her. The idea was that the turtles were going to fall in the vat instead. The logic here was that serpents were natural predators of mice, so by mutating the turtles into serpents, they wouldn't have been able to resist the urge to kill their father. There are a lot of assumptions there, but let's just agree that it is generally not a good idea to put the one person you don't want to mutate on top of the mutagen, especially if you have Baxter's Mousers that come with the technology of creating holograms. Anyway, it went wrong. Car I fell into the mutagen and she was mutated into a serpent with serpents as hands, an artistic decision that may or may not have been influenced by the scale tail action figure. Her mutation was special because Baxter had a small incident in the lab while preparing the DNA. This made her mutation unstable and allowed her to turn back into human from time to time. 
but while in her serpent state, she was very much mindless and dangerous. So Shredder's plan, in a way, worked, because now it was impossible for Splinter and Karai to be in the same room. The Shredder, however, didn't take this as a victory. Karai lived in an abandoned theme park for a while, and she even saved Master Splinter's life after a confrontation with the Shredder. She even led the Turtles to that place to be able to say goodbye to them, but she got kidnapped by Bebop and Rocksteady. Shredder and Baxter started using some mind control worms to manipulate her in what I am going to assume was a homage to Mr. Mind. Under the Shredder's control, she almost killed the whole Amato clan, but thanks to Splinter's healing hands technique, she was able to reject the worm. After three seasons and a half, the Turtles, or more specifically, Splinter, finally defeated Shredder. This was the ideal opportunity for Karai to take over the Foot Clan and put an end to the Shredder. She brought in Shinigami, a longtime friend from Japan, to help her. She also recruited Human Foot Ninja in Japan in an attempt to take down another possible leader for the clan, Atori Tatsu. By now, Karai was able to control her mutation on command, using her serpent shape whenever it was necessary. After learning Karai's plan, Splinter opposed it because revenge had historically never worked for them. She decided to go for revenge anyway, but this time around, Leonardo joined her. This didn't go as expected, and Karai got half of her face burned, just like the Shredder, but then she revealed she could shed her skin like snakes, erasing all the scars. Shredder became the Super Shredder and then kidnapped Karai to use her as bait for Splinter. Now you may think this is getting repetitive, but I think the intention was to demonstrate how obsessed Shredder was with getting revenge against Splinter, and the mutagen was also making him believe his lies. The kidnapping didn't take, and she started living with the mighty Mutanimals to stay safe. Super Shredder tracked her down, defeated the Mutanimals, and then left Karai for dead in a similar way to how Tang Shin died. Karai ended up in the hospital, but gave the Turtles the location of the new headquarters of the Shredder. After the death of Splinter by the hands of the Super Shredder, the Turtles put an end to the Shredder's life. After Karai came out of the hospital, she and Shinigami tried to take charge of the clan, but they had competition. Tiger Claw was the next in line and had some followers, and on the other hand, Tatsu had the Kuro Kabuto, and whoever held the helmet led the clan, baby. Kavaxis killed Tatsu and then brought back Super Shredder from the Netherworld. The Turtles and Karai reverted all the damage done, and Tiger Claw left the clan after announcing a truce. Karai became the new leader, with Shinigami as her second in command. They were last seen during the confrontation between the Turtles and the 1987 Foot Clan. But did she become the leader of the Foot Clan or did she claim her place in the Amato Clan? Well, not much is known of Karai after the end of the show, but we do know that after the mutagen bomb dropped over New York, and during the events of the mutant apocalypse, she was presumed dead. However, her helmet showed up with the Amato clan emblem, so maybe she followed on her real father's legacy. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to press the like button, subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.